Today I will teach on the subject tithes and offerings. Are we under the law when it comes to tithing and offering in the New Testament? Or are we under grace? What does God expect us to do? I know there are many churches or should we say clergies who merchandise the word of God. They use the Old Testament system to bring their people into bondage by telling them that they are robbing God if they don't bring their tithes and offerings to the church. Is that teaching error if somebody is doing that? Today I want to look at this subject. Are we under grace or are we under the law when it comes to tithing and offering? The Lord wants us to be at peace in our heart with that subject. And I know there is a lot of confusion in the churches today when it comes to tithing and offering. But before we get into this message, I will ask the Lord to bless us. Heavenly Father, I come before you and I pray, O God, that you will open the hearts of the listeners. Lord, you will enable me, O God, to bring forth this message so that people will understand. And Lord God, you will set people free. Lord Jesus, within their spirit, so that they can rejoice when they bring their offerings to your storehouse. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for the word of God. I ask you to bless this message in Jesus' name. Amen. When we look at Malachi chapter 3, which a lot of churches these days are using as a guideline for how God wants us to bring tithes and offerings into the church. And I have to admit, it is a good line, good guideline. But the law does not apply to the believer. For Romans chapter 6 and verse 14 tells us very clearly that we are not under the law, but we are under grace. For starters, I will show you what the Old Testament teaches on tithes and offering. What God expected of the Old Testament people. It tells us in Malachi chapter 3 that God demanded for them to bring their tithes and offerings into God's storehouse. It tells us in verse 8, Will a man rub God. Yet you have robbed me, but you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. So he is telling them, first of all, you are cursed with a curse, because you robbed me by not bringing me your tithes and offerings. Then it goes on to tell us, Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and you shall not and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And I have heard these, this message being preached over many, many radio and TV programs where the pastor or the teacher accuses the people in the church of robbing God by not bringing their tithes into God's storehouse. That is not true. For we are not under the law, but we are under grace. So there is no law telling us to bring tithes and offerings into the storehouse. So if there's no law telling us to do it, why then are we called 
thieves and robbers. That is an error that is being preached in the church. In one case they want to teach grace and then in the other case they want to teach the law. And that ought not to be. For the child of God should be led by the Holy Spirit and not by some external law that the pastor is bringing upon the people. There is a scripture in Malachi chapter 3 verse 2. It tells us, But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. What does that tell us? It tells us when God comes back, he will be like a refiner's fire and he will be a laundry man with very strong soap and he will do some cleaning. And the Bible teaches us also in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 that we should be careful how we build up upon the foundation of God. And if we are going to build on that foundation with the law, then we will also receive the judgment of the law. We have to be careful that God shows us on how to operate with these matters. A lot of Christians are trapped into thinking that they are under the law and are and they have an obligation to bring their tithes and offerings. That is not true, for the Lord never demands of any Christian to bring any money to him. The Lord wants a willing heart that is joyful in bringing his tithes and offerings, or should I say offerings, into his storehouse. I once heard a preacher put it like this. He said, the tithes that we are paying today are is our income tax. Because in the Old Testament, the people brought their tithes into God's storehouse so that they could fix roads, so that they could help the poor, so that they could pay the people who were maintaining those roads. And this is exactly what the government is doing with our tax dollars. But they're not taking only 10%, they're maybe taking 50% already. And a lot of them are squandering our money. But that's beside the point. They will have to give an account of that themselves. But what should we do? And there is another thing that a lot of so-called uh, preachers neglect to bring forth. In Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 12, it tells us that every third year, people should not bring their tithes into the storehouse, but give it to the Levite and give it to the, to the, to the widow and to the orphan and to the, the people that have nothing. Yes, every third year, that was their responsibility. You never hear that being preached anywhere today. And it is no wonder why they don't preach on this. But what should a Christian do? How should a Christian operate when it comes to bringing his offerings to God? Why should he bring his offerings to God? The Bible teaches us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace, and there's also goodness and faith. I want to expound on those two. What is goodness and faith? When a person is good, he will try to help others with the substance that he has. Whatever money you have, you will try to help others. And many Christians do that. I know many people who give of what they have to to the church with then, which then gives to the poor and preaches the gospel. And that's the order it should be in. But the person who brings his offering into the house of God 
to preach the gospel, to help the poor, shouldn't be under any law. He should bring it because of the fruit of the Spirit that is within him, which is goodness, the fruit of goodness. And faith, faith works like this. You have faith when you bring your substance into God's storehouses that those who are in charge will use it for the furthering of the kingdom. And I want to inject something here. Make sure when you bring this into a storehouse, into the church of your choice, that they are doing what you feel is right. If you do not feel that your church is doing right, if you feel somehow that they are squandering your money, then it is your responsibility to be a good steward, to sow that seed in good ground. If you just put it there and tell yourself that's their problem, that's their responsibility, then you are neglecting your responsibility. For God has given you a sound mind and you should know whether they are using it for the kingdom of God. Make sure that they are responsible for the seed that you are giving to them. Yes, what person would give somebody seed to put it into alkali, where it will bring nothing but thorns? Yes, this is the message I'm trying to bring. Make sure you're responsible. And do it out of a heart that is kind. Not because you're under some rule and regulation or obligation. Do it out of the goodness of your heart. You are being led by the Holy Spirit. You are not being ordered by Him. For the fruit of the Spirit is goodness and kindness and meekness and faith. Faith that what you are doing is right. You should not be ordered into doing these things when you are a child of God. And far too many children of God Born again believers neglect that and part of it. So be careful with what you do with the seed that you are sowing into the kingdom of God. God wants you to be a good steward. He wants you to be responsible. The Bible teaches that God delights in a cheerful giver. What is a cheerful giver? I put it this way, if you rejoice in your salvation, if you rejoice in what Jesus did for you, you will very cheerfully give up the money that you have to bring another person into the kingdom. So you will use the money that God has given you. You, you will use a part of it to, bring, to give it to those who are preaching the gospel so that more can be added into the kingdom. That it is, a, that is a good and kind heart because you are concerned for their salvation. You will use the money that you are working for, for the furthering of the kingdom, for the preaching of the gospel, that many more will enter into that kingdom. This is a cheerful giver, a person who rejoices in the saving of a man's soul, and he will give his money to do it. You do not have to bring your 10%, or you do not have to bring an offering. You do it because you love your neighbor. This is the fruit of the Spirit that God is speaking about. Where do you stand on this subject? Are you under some law, rule, or regulation when it comes to tithing and offering? Or are you being led by the Holy Spirit? There is a big difference. Jesus our Lord will bring you joy and peace 
For it tells us in Malachi chapter three, uh, chapter three, verse ten. Bring you your tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be ro not room enough to receive it. Even though you are not under the law to bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse, you can still receive the blessing part of it by bringing it out of a joyful heart. The Lord will open the windows of heaven and pour great blessings out upon you. And dear people, I have brought my fruit into the storehouse of God and I have been joyful since I have been a Christian because when you prove your life in Christ by your giving, then God will bring forth joy and peace and tranquility. The Lord will open your heart to this awesome truth and make you a blessing to many. When I talk to fellow Christians, there is a subject that often comes up. There is a concern whether we are really, truly uh, worshiping God out of a heart that loves Him. Do we really appreciate this Jesus who, sa who saved us? And most every Christian who loves Jesus is concerned with himself whether he is really faithful to his God. And I've heard many people say they would love to love the Lord with all their heart and all their soul and all their mind. Many Christians are concerned over how they uh, operate with God. They would love to improve. They like to give God their best. But there is one preacher which I appreciate, which brought forth a very interesting statement. He, he said, when we go to church and we get up to praise and worship, afterwards we sometimes wonder, were we, were we really in tune with God? Or were we just a hypocrite? Were we raising our hands so that everybody else can see them? Were we raising our hands in true worship? Or was it just so because somebody else was doing it? And he said that is the concern of a lot of Christians. But there is one place where re you can really know for sure whether you are in tune with God, whether you are worshiping God. And that is to look at your checkbook. Your checkbook will not tell you a lie. You will know whether you are a hypocrite or not. If you give month by month to God's kingdom of your substance, if you give faithfully every month the best of your ability, then you know for a fact that you are truly honest with your God. And, he, and I'm not talking about giving a one-time thing and then forgetting about God for the next 10 years. I'm talking about a faithful worship to God month by month by giving of the money that you have received for the furthering of the kingdom. He said, when you look at that checkbook, then you know whether you're truly worshiping God or not. And I thought that was an interesting statement. That will bring a question to many hearts today. Are you truly worshiping God out of a heart that appreciates Him? And then the question comes up, should a person ask for prosperity? Should we pray for prosperity? Well, first of all, in Psalm chapter 30, 35 in verse 27, it tells us, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his saints. So it tells us here, that God has pleasure 
in the prosperity of his saints. The psalmist also writes in 118 verse 25, Say, if now I beseech thee, O Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. So the psalmist is telling us that we should pray for prosperity. Why should we pray for prosperity? Why does God want us to pray for prosperity? It is to further the kingdom. The, prosper, the prosperity that he gives us, the money that he sends our way, we should take part of it and give it back to him for the furthering of the kingdom. For when we bring people into the kingdom by allowing a person to preach the gospel, then we are a sweet-smelling savior to our God, and he will write a book of remembrance about that. That is written in Malachi chapter 3, that the Lord is writing a book of remembrance of them that do those things. Yes, that book will someday be opened, and God will know the intention of every heart. He will know whether you are a true worshiper or not. So let us worship God in truth and in spirit and receive his awesome blessings. The Lord bless you and make you a blessing. Amen.